As far as I know, the Torah has no concept of the throne of the Almighty. Where did Muhammad get his ideas that he inserted in his Quran? As has been repeatedly demonstrated in many of our chapters, Muhammad plagiarized, plundered, pirated, and or perverted concepts, precepts, thoughts, and ideas that he heard recited in Arabia from rabbinic post-biblical traditions as expounded in the Talmud, Midrash, and others. On numerous occasions, as we have shown, he missed the meaning or invariably had many of the names of the Hebrew leaders wrong and or allocated them in a different period of history. The Torah states that only Abraham, Aaron, and Moses were prophets, while Muhammad adds Adam, Noah, Joseph, Ishmael, Isaac, and Jacob in his Quran. Nowhere in the Torah is there a concept of the throne of God. This allegorical or apocryphal precept was created later on by the rabbis to make concepts about the Almighty more understandable. Muhammad in his Quran perverts this concept into a physical reality. Al-Haqqa 69.17 And the angels will be on its sides and eight will that day bear the throne of thy Lord above them. Hud 11.7 he it is who created the heavens and the earth in six days, and his throne was over the waters. Sahih al-Bukhari hadith 4.414 narrated by Imran bin Hussein. Some Yemenites came to the Prophet and said, We have come to ask you about the start of creations. He said, First of all, there was nothing but Allah, and his throne was over the water. And he wrote everything in the book in the heaven and created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1.1 in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. As usual with Muhammad, he perverted the concept of the Spirit of God, which was beyond his comprehension, and turned it into the throne of Allah. Al-Zumar 39.75 and thou wilt see the angels surrounding the throne on all sides singing glory and praise to their Lord. Ghafar 40.7 Those who sustain the throne of Allah and those around it sing glory and praise to their Lord, believe in Him and implore forgiveness for those who believe. Sahih al-Bukhari hadith 6.326 narrated by Abu Dahr. Once I was with the Prophet in the mosque at the time of sunset, the Prophet said, O oh, Abu Dar, do you know where the sun sets? I replied, Allah and his apostle know best. He said, it goes and prostrates itself under Allah's throne. Sahih al-Bukhari 9.524 narrated by Abu Sa'id al-Khudri. The Prophet said, the people will fall unconscious on the day of resurrection. Then suddenly I will see Moses holding one of the pillars of the throne. Abu Huraira said, the Prophet said, I will be the first person to be resurrected and will see Moses holding the throne. Al-Tirmidhi Hadith 136, narrated by Abdullah ibn Umar. Allah Messenger said, This Sa'ad, for whom the throne of Allah was stirred and there were opened for him the doors of heaven and 70,000 angels participated in his funeral prayer. His grave was compressed and later on it was expanded for him. Why would the throne of Allah, if Allah were God, shake because of the death of a murderer? Is this statement not blasphemy? How could Muhammad entertain such an ungodly idea? Al-Tirmidhi Hadith 1967 narrated by Abdullah ibn Umar. The Prophet said, Paradise is decorated for Ramadan from the beginning of the year till a following year. And when the first day of Ramadan comes, a wind under the throne blows some of the leaves of paradise on the maidens with the large bright eyes and they say, My Lord, appoint us husbands from among thy servants with whom we shall be happy and who will be happy with us. Al-Tirmidhi Hadith 2133 narrated by Abdul Rahman bin Auf. The Prophet said, Three things will be under the throne on the day of resurrection. The Quran, which will contend with men, having an exoteric and an esoteric meaning, the trust and ties of relationship which will say, Allah, join those who join me and sever those who sever me. 
Al-Tirmidhi hadith 2173 narrated by Jubair ibn Nufayr. Allah, Messenger said, Allah finished Surah Al-Baqarah with two verses which have been given from his treasure which is under the throne. So learn them and teach them to your women folk, for they are a blessing, a means of approach to Allah and the supplication. Al-Tirmidhi hadith 3465 narrated by Abdullah ibn Abbas. The Prophet said, on the day of resurrection, the slain will bring the slayer with his forelock and his head in his hand, his own jugular vein, meanwhile, dripping with blood, and he will say, my Lord, he killed me, till he brings him near the throne. Al-Tirmidhi hadith 4859 narrated by Anas bin Malik. Allah's Messenger said, when a reprobate is praised, the Lord Most High is angry and the throne shakes on account of it. Al-Tirmidhi hadith 5766 narrated by Abu Huraira. The Prophet said, I shall be clothed with one of the robes of paradise and shall then stand at the right of the throne, a place where no other creature than I shall stand. Sahih Muslim Hadith 6035, narrated by Anas ibn Malik. Allah Messenger said that his beard, that of Sa'ad, was placed before them, and the throne of the most compassionate shook. Hadith Qudsi 27. We asked Abdullah ibn Mas'ud about this verse, Al-Imran 3.169. And do not regard those who have been killed in the cause of Allah as dead. Rather, they are alive with their Lord being provided for. He said, we asked about that and the Prophet said, their souls are in the insides of green birds, having lanterns suspended from the throne, roaming freely in paradise where they please, then taking shelter in those lanterns. Ladies and gentlemen, as only a few of hundreds upon hundreds of other hadiths clearly indicate, Muhammad had no understanding of the concept of the spirit world. The throne of Allah is physical since it is three-dimensional and exists in a particular part of Muhammad's paradise. Muhammad truly believed that the dead would reappear physically in paradise or hell. That is why his fundamentalist followers are willing to blow themselves up committing mass murder in pursuit of the 72 virgins and unlimited sexual and sensual pleasures for eternity in Muhammad's whorehouse version of paradise.